You must disappear now! You're both third-rate trainers with fourth-rate Pokémon. Wait, Wait, you, you launched, launched it? it? Joey, is that you? Wahad! Dark magic attack! Lakaza! Hey guys, we're Nuzlocking Pokémon Emerald as the king of games himself. And since Yugi's most popular monsters were spellcasters, we're only allowed to use dark and psychic type Pokémon. And since it's a Nuzlocke, if any of them faint, yeah, they're gone for good. As a fun challenge, leave a comment guessing how many attempts I made at this run, because... Yeah, it was definitely more than one. If this video does well, I'll feature any comments that guess the number correctly in the next Nuzlocke. But with all the explaining done, let's get started. Ow, my head! Where am I? And why am I in the back of a truck? Yuki, we're here, honey! What? Mom? I haven't seen you since season one! Are you okay? Here's your backpack, sweetie. It's time for you to start your journey. What? No, I just want to be a family. Take these shoes and get out. Mom might have kicked us out, but lucky for us, the local professor lends us a Torchic so we can catch our first Pokemon. A Poochiena we nickname Silverfang. She seems a little naive, but I'm sure she'll do great. I mainly train Silverfang against Wurmple and Meryl for HP EVs, and you'll see why once we get to the first gym. But on the very next route, we get our second encounter, a Ralts we nickname Mana. And the heart of the card seems to work in this world too, because she has a modest nature. Literally the best nature we could possibly hope for, so I am really excited to use her. After making it through the first route, we find a lonely child. Hi there, kiddo. What's wrong? My face is reflected in the water. It's a shining grin full of hope. Or could it be a look of somber silence struggling with fear? Uh, you okay, bud? What do you see reflected in your face? Well, I see the pharaoh. Yo. No! Hello, Yugi. It appears we have been transported to another world. Yeah, I don't know how we got here, let alone how we're gonna get back home. Perhaps we will find out more by continuing on this journey. You're right, maybe the local gym leader can help us. Hello, son. I have a dad in this world too? What was that? Nothing. After finding out we have a father in this world, we help a kid named Wally catch his very own Dark Magician Girl. But before moving on, I make sure to pick up plenty of antidotes because in these games, when a Pokemon is poisoned, it does not instantly recover at one health like they do in Gen 4 games and onward. I might have learned that one the hard way on a previous playthrough, but let's ignore that unfortunate event. On our way to the first gym, we beat up a Team Aqua Grunt, which helps this guy keep his job, but all he gives us is a Great Ball. Now get out of here. Well, at least we can pick up the Bullet Seed TM and have our first double battle. If Kaiba were here, I know exactly what he would say. You're both third-rate trainers with fourth-rate Pokémon. Upon entering Rustboro City, we stop by the trainer school and talk to the teacher. Students who don't study get a little taste of my quick claw. Stop! Give me that! Are you guys okay? After reporting him to the school board, we head north for our next encounter. It's an Abra, and in full transparency, it teleports away. But I really wanted an Alakazam for this playthrough because it fills the role of Dark Magician, so we managed to catch one and we name it Mahad. And it turns out to also have a modest nature. I honestly wish it wasn't modest because I feel like people won't believe me, but we'll just chalk it up to Yugi's ungodly luck stat. After training as much as we can in HP and bringing our Pokemon right up to the level cap, we're ready to challenge Roxanne. And challenge is definitely the right word, since Abra can't learn any damaging moves, the only Pokemon we can use are Silver Fang and Mana, and neither are very good into Roxanne's bulky rock types. But here goes nothing. She sends out one of her two Geodudes and we send out Silver Fang. Luckily, she learned Bite recently because otherwise we would have almost no attacking options. We go for Bite, which does about half and gets the flinch. That is a very good start. We go for another Bite, leaving her Geodude at one health and also getting another flinch. Wow, heart of the cards, I guess. Roxanne potions, but Silverfang takes out the first Geodude with a couple more bites. And Silverfang levels up, which is allowed in hardcore Nuzlocke as long as we start the fight at the level cap. Out comes the second Geodude. We managed to take this one down after several bites, but Silverfang's speed was lowered by a Rock Tomb. 
Now this is the first time we've managed to get to her nose pass with this much health, but we still need to get lucky if we want to avoid a death, so I fire off a sand attack to lower her accuracy, and nose pass goes for Harden. However, Gen 3 was before the physical special split, so Dark type is actually special in this gen, so Bite is not affected by the defense boost. But on the next turn, her nose pass outspeeds us, revealing that after the speed drop from Rock Tomb, Silver Fang and nose pass are speed tied, meaning it's a coin flip for which of us gets to attack first. First. To make matters worse, it uses Block, which prevents us from switching out. We use a few more Sand Attacks, while Roxanne just goes for more Hardens. We finally go for a Bite, and... It does next to nothing. Cool. You can see why this was not my first attempt at beating Roxanne, but we literally don't have a choice, so we keep going for Bite, and luckily Nosepass misses a few moves in a row thanks to the combo of Sand Attack and Rock Tomb's already shaky accuracy. She heals with an Orinberry and manages to land a tackle, bringing Silver down to the yellow. We do have mana in the back to revenge kill with Confusion, but speaking from experience, losing our Poochiana makes the run a lot more difficult, so it's going to be close. We bite it down to the red, and... Nosepass misses her next attack, letting Silverfang snatch the win. I can't believe it, but we managed to beat Roxanne with only a Poochiana. You're a good girl, aren't you? You're such a good- <clears throat> Ow. Leave a like. Immediately after leaving the gym, we witness a robbery. Wait, please, don't take my goods! I missed the part where that's my problem. Now we can finally head south to- Oh crap, it's May. I'll sneak behind undetected. <laughs> How about a battle? How about no? Anyway, we can sail to Duford Town for another encounter and the second gym. We catch a Sableye and name him Feral Imp. Impy is a quiet little guy, but I really can't complain about natures on this run. But Impy wasn't the only one we found in those caves. Uh, hi. Are you Steven? I have a letter for you. <laughs> oh, thanks. I keep telling my dad he could just email me, but you know Gen 1ers, am I right? So what brings you to Duford? We're actually looking for information on how to get home. We're not really from around here. You mean like, Kanto? Or maybe even as far as Kalos? No, we're, uh, from another dimension? But you probably think that's crazy. <laughs> not at all. With hair like that, I'd believe just about anything. You know, my dad's company was actually researching interdimensional travel a while back. I don't think the research made much headway, but I can look into it if you'd like. Really? That's convenient. With some newfound hope for a way home, we also get some big team upgrades as Mahad evolves into a Kadabra and Silverfang evolves into an intimidating Mightyena. But before taking on the next gym, I thought we should get a feel for the local culture. What's in vogue? Why it has to be Lousy Song. So it's popular over here too, huh? I collect official Lousy Song merchandise, dolls, and picture books. Yeah, I think we found the Whalmer. Now it's time to battle Brawly, which is a nice break after the nightmarish first gym. His Pokemon only have fighting attacks, so our newly summoned Feral Imp can eliminate each of his Pokemon without taking a single hit. Second badge down. I heard some good things about the museum in Slateport, so we head over and get stuck waiting in line. After a couple hours, we finally make it inside. The entrance fee is 50 Poke Dollars. Would you like to enter? Oh no, um... She's staring. We don't have any money, Pharaoh. What am I supposed to do? Just say something quick! I'm... with them? Oh! You're with that group from earlier? You better go catch up with them! Yes! Hello, my fellow Team Aqua members! Take this! I'm done with Team Aqua! Um... Th thank you? After we infiltrate Team Aqua's field trip, we're forced to battle some more grunts. And do you remember how I said losing Poochiana makes the run a lot more difficult? Well, Team Aqua and Magma both use a ton of Dark-type Pokémon, which are immune to Psychic attacks. And unfortunately, Ralt and Abra don't learn any damaging moves outside of Confusion. So without a way to damage all the potential Dark-types, we either had to use up all of our power points setting up Struggle, or instantly lose the run whenever we encountered a small fish. But this time, we still have Silverfang around, so she can make some quick sashimi before starting the journey up to Mallville. We get another team upgrade on the way, but now we have our first official rival fight with Mei. I start with Silverfang, and she sends out Lombre. We start with Bite for decent damage, and Lombre hits a soft absorb. I decide to try to stack up our attack stat with Howl, and after being brought to half, we're at plus 5 attack and can take down Lombre with a single tackle. Next up is Marshomp, 
Silverfang misses tackle, and May goes for bide, meaning in two turns, any damage it takes will be dealt back to us. I don't want to risk our starter, so we take a couple turns off to Howl up to plus six, and top it off with a sand attack. Silverfang lands a huge tackle, but Marsh Tomp hits Mudshot that reduces our speed and puts us in KO range. I don't think we'll outspeed after the Mudshot, so I switch over to Impy, and after getting hit low, our little fiend can score the kill with Nightshade. Her last Pokemon is Slugma, so Impy finishes the battle with a few Astonishes. We make it to Mauville, and there are a few things we can do here, like picking up the HM for Rock Smash, which will come in handy very soon, checking out the casino, and crushing Wally into dust with our superior Dark Magician Girl. We also get a new encounter to the west, a CDOT with just a 1% encounter rate. So after a couple hundred wild battles, not kidding, we finally catch one and name it Gaia. She might not look like much, but we desperately need an electric resistance because our next boss fight is one of the hardest gym leaders of all time. So I EV train our Pokemon like crazy and bring everyone right up to the level cap in preparation. Now there's nothing left to do but challenge the legendary Nuzlocke Ender, Watson, the electric gym leader. We start out with Silverfang and he sends out Voltorb. Silver gets some damage off with Bite and he gets a first turn paralysis with Spark, but I gave most of our team members Cherry Berries just in case they got paralyzed. After trading some attacks and getting his Super Potion, we have to switch out to Impy, who tanks a Shockwave well and scores the kill with Priority Fake Out. We get a couple level ups here, and I was not kidding when I said I EV trained like crazy. Impy gets a whopping 9 extra health points off the level up, which should help us tank an extra move. Electrike comes out next, so I switch to Gaia on a Howl. Fake Out does good damage and is a guaranteed flinch, so we can follow it up with a two-hit Bullet Seed. Watson hits a quick attack, and we go for a Bullet Seed that could potentially kill if it gets all five hits. <sighs> of course. Gaia only gets four hits, leaving him at a sliver. But since we know he's using Quick Attack, we can pivot back to Paralympe for the immunity and another snipe with Fake Out. But here comes a Pokemon I am terrified of. Magneton. Impy just learned Detect, so we can use it to scout that he's going for Shockwave, so I switch over to Gaia for the resistance, but he misses a Supersonic which is pretty lucky. Fake Out is free, and now we employ the only real strategy I could come up with to fight this monster. Rock Smash. A pretty weak fighting move, but it comes with the chance of lowering the target's defense, and we get the defense drop immediately. Okay, now we're in business. Magneton uses Thunder Wave, but another Cherry Berry cures our paralysis. Since it seems he's going for Thunder Wave, I make a cheeky switch into Mana, who has the Synchronize ability, so we can paralyze Magneton while using another berry. I'm feeling pretty slick at this point, so I switch over to Impy, who cures paralysis with another berry. Watson must be fuming because we're using his own paralysis strategy against him. We get another free fake out and try to scout with detect again, but the magnets stay paralyzed. I get a little carried away here and go for astonish because I'm trying to paraflinch him out of the game, but it doesn't work and Watson finally manages to stick a thunder wave. Well, it took you long enough. Impy tanks a shockwave pretty well and fires back with nightshade before bringing magneton down to the red. It's looking pretty good, or it would if Watson didn't super potion all the way back to full health. And to top it off, we lose a ton of momentum because Sableye stays paralyzed. This could be bad. Impy takes another shockwave, which definitely would have killed if it crit, and we bring it to two thirds with a nightshade. I'm not ready to sacrifice Impy just yet, so I pivot back to Gaia, and Magneton stays paralyzed. Yes, we can get another free fake out and go for another rock smash, which gets the defense drop again. Rock Smash has a 50% chance to drop defense, but still, Gaia is a beast. Clearly still upset about our Cherry Berry shenanigans, Watson goes for Thunder Wave again, but even paralyzed, Gaia still outspeeds and gets the kill with another Rock Smash. We might be able to do this without losing anyone. Out comes Watson's ace, Maynectric. A really strong Pokemon to face this early in the game, but I have one last trick up my sleeve. I taught Gaia the Thief TM, which lets us steal Manectric's Citrus Berry. With effectively 100 hit points, I'm feeling really good about the end of this fight, so Gaia tanks a quick attack and gets another 2 hit Bullet Seed. She takes another quick attack to a third, and I decide Bullet Seed isn't consistent enough, so we land another Thief to bring it down to half and get to chow down on our pirated berry back to the green. After exchanging a few more hits, I decide to switch to Mana, who takes a lot more damage from a quick attack than I thought. We can't really switch now, so Mana takes a Shockwave and lives it on 5 health, and now she can finish the match with confusion. Okay, a little sloppy at the tail end, but we managed to defeat Watson without losing any of our new friends. Look at our team after that, I mean ignoring Mahad, he was really just chilling in the back. 
That was certainly a tough battle. I think we deserve a break. What were you thinking we do, Pharaoh? Well... After a long trek, we have another encounter over in Meteor Falls. A soul rock. I'm really looking forward to it, since I've never used one before, plus it's rock type, which will be invaluable since the fire gem is... next. <sighs> Let's just move on. Further on in the cave, there are some aqua and magma guys arguing over if water or land is more important. ¿Por qué no los dos? So we climb the volcano and battle Team Magma's leader, Maxi. We both send out our scary doggos, but I decide to switch to Impy for the free fakeout damage. We can use Detect to scout again, but we just tank a bite anyway and fire back with a Nightshade. After our berry, I switch back to Silverfang and we slug it out with bites until Silverfang comes out on top. He sends in Zubat and we miss our bite, so I send out Mahad who takes a little too much damage from Wing Attack, but now we can outspeed and take it out with a super effective Psybeam. His final Pokemon is Camerupt, and I decide to just stay in since we don't have a floating rock to switch into but Mahad scores a crit to take him down. After the battle, Maxi retreats, declaring that he will awaken some kind of legendary Pokemon. I will awaken some legendary Pokemon! Our next encounter is a cute little spoink that we name Burfamet. Unfortunately, he evolves right after the level cap at 32, so he's gonna need to bounce for his life in the next gym battle. We make it to Lava Ridge Town and find this older gentleman relaxing in the sand. Ouch! A Pokemon nipped at my backside! Get back in the ball, Impy. We got a gym to take down. The gym trainers don't cause us too much trouble, but Flannery is another matter. She boasts a sunny day strategy with a terrifying Torkoal. After training up the team, we can get the battle started. She sends out Nummel, and we start with Impy. Fake Out is a free attack that deals a solid chunk, and then we swing with Faint Attack to bring Nummel down to one health. I forgot about her potion here, so she heals and I waste a turn, but I can go for another Detect to block Overheat. I decide to swap into Burfamet, and Flannery goes for Sunny Day, so now all of her fire moves pack an extra punch. We manage to confuse Nummel, but she uses another Overheat, which Lil Burfy takes surprisingly well. And if you don't know, after using Overheat, the Pokemon loses two stages of special attack, which makes it easier to take more hits. So my plan is to stall out her last three overheats and then set up and sweep the rest of her team. We can Psybeam to bring it low and shrug off her third overheat with a berry. Only two more and we can go for our plan. I switch into Mahad while Nummel hits itself in confusion down to one health again. Mahad sets up Reflect to soften the physical attacks. Now we can keep using Recover until the Nummel runs out of power points on overheat. But she uses Takedown and barely survives the recoil. I don't actually want her Nummel to die yet, so I switch to Impy since his immunity to takedown will prevent it from any recoil damage. But she keeps going for Magnitude instead of Overheat, and I can't stay in anymore, so I pivot back to Mahad who takes another Magnitude low. I don't have a lot of options anymore, so I switch in the Grass-type Gaia and Nummel takes itself out with recoil damage. Well, that did not go according to plan. Out comes Camerupt and I just don't have a lot of options. I want to keep Silverfang for the Intimidate switches and I can't lose the grass coverage Gaia provides for future battles. So unfortunately, sacrifices must be made. Lil Burfy takes one for the team and goes down to another overheat. That lets me safely switch in Silverfang for Intimidate. And with Camera Up's special attack already down, it shouldn't be dealing too much damage. Unless, of course, it gets a critical hit. If you didn't know, critical hits ignore stat changes, so let's hope that doesn't happen. We go for a few sand attacks while Camera Up misses most of its attacks, including three overheats. Maybe we can still execute our stall plan. It sets up Sunny Day and we just keep throwing pocket sand. And it misses the fourth overheat. Okay, so I switch over to mana and start double teaming. Is it honorable? No, not at all, but we still want to find a way back to Domino City, and we can't do that if we're dead. After five double teams, we start setting up with Calm Mind. Since our stats are huge, the only thing that could possibly that's a crit down to 6 health. Okay, time to go on the offensive. A plus 5 stab psychic proves to be more than enough to one-shot her camera up. After powering up, Mana one-shots Flannery's last two Pokemon as well. That was a roller coaster of a match. As a reward, Flannery gives us her phone number. Wink and May rewards us with the Go Goggles. After seeing Yugi get all this attention, Taya fans must be in shambles. But first, we need to bury Burfamet. We might have been able to save him by hard switching to Silverfang, but we already have two Mono Psychic Mons on our team, so I stand by the decision. Thanks for your sacrifice, little Burfy. Now that we have the appropriate PPE, we can venture into the desert for another teammate. We have two potential encounters, and we find... A ball toy, which is definitely the one I was hoping for, since we already have a Grass Dark Pokemon in Gaia. Plus, I've never used Claydol 
it all before, and I just think it's neat. Welcome to the team, Valkyrian. I decide to EV train it in HP and physical attack since we have quite a few special attackers on the team already. We also get a huge upgrade as Mana evolves into Gardevoir, a significant powerhouse for the team. But the next gym leader is our father. You'll be facing your father next, Yugi. Are you ready for such a battle? Of course, Pharaoh. He's not my real dad. In fact, I don't think I even have a dad. Oh, right. He sends out Spinda, and we lead with Impy. Funny enough, his Spinda only has normal and psychic moves, both of which Impy is immune to. We can abuse this by switching between Silverfang and Impy, reducing its attack to minus 6 with Intimidate, and stalling out most of its moves. That paves the way to bring mana in for the setup. We get three Calm Minds off before it manages a critical hit. Ugh, deja vu. Well, now it's time to fire off those modest stab psychics. Boom! Bam! Bop! His last Pokemon is Linoon, and I don't want to risk getting outsped, so we switch over to Feralimp, and we can take it out with a couple more attacks. That's five badges down. Wally's dad also gives us the Search HM, which lets us explore the high seas for treasure. Yo! What is this? A boat for ants? Raiding the ship does grant us a free Ice Beam TM, which will save us some money later on when we're preparing for the Elite Four. Look, one of Joey's cards must have been sent to this world too. It's shiny, but it's just trash. <laughs> Next, we can pick up the Good Rod, fish up a Carvana, and... Of course, land a critical hit to take it down. Well, at least there's another location we can find one. We do, however, manage to catch a Corefish and name her Buster. Uh, I thought you fly by catching a whole flock of bird Pokemon and then hanging on to them somehow, but it turns out there's an HM move called Fly. I wish I'd known that a long time ago. Oh no, what did you... <laughs> We have a second chance at a Carvana, and this time we're successful and name her Gandora. Roselia uses Leech Seed. Mana was seeded. Whoa, this is not that kind of game, my dude. Team Aqua is causing some trouble at the Weather Institute, but we're able to defeat them without much trouble, and they run away. Pharaoh, I know we're trying to find a way back to Domino, but we can't let Team Aqua and Team Magma get away with this. They're trying to destroy this world. I agree. We must put a stop to their evil plans before returning home. Another rival fight is next, but Mei's team is completely torn apart by Mahad and Gaia. Luckily, she's a good sport and gives us the Fly HM. I decided to train Gandora, but before challenging the next gym leader, I went ahead and secured our next encounter, an Absol named Luster. Now it's time to face Winona, but between Gandora's Ice Beam and Mana's Thunderbolt, Winona goes down without much trouble. We get some pretty sweet evolutions with Valkyrian and Mahad both evolving into some absolute powerhouses. So I decide to test out Mahad's magical prowess by challenging Mei to another battle. Critical! 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 Wow, that seemed really excessive, Mahad. Well, let's put that power to good use and raid Team Magma's secret lair. Oh, I also caught a shiny Meryl earlier that I've been using as an HM mod. So that's neat. While we're cleaning up the Magma Grunts, we stumbled on this guy. I think we're going a little too far, don't you think? Yeah, I think we're doing something wrong somehow. Next time I see our leader, I'm going to ask him about what we do. Yeah, I'm sure that conversation's gonna go well. I find your lack of faith disturbing. After letting Gandora and company decimate every magma grunt in our path, we only had their leader left to face. <laughs> Groudon, show me the full extent of your power! Bye, have a great time! What? No! It's impossible! Well, I guess we learned a valuable lesson about tampering with forces beyond our ken? Mm, this is your fault! I'll destroy you! Yeah, I didn't think so. Maxi leads with Mightyena, and Gandora starts the battle with a critical hit Surf to take him down. Not sure how a giant wave can critically hit, but we take those. We slam his Crobat with an Ice Beam, but he lands a Confuse Ray. Not wanting to risk anything, I switch over to Valkyrion while he heals. After some back and forth and hitting ourselves in confusion, I switch in Silverfang to take him down. And finally, out comes his ace, Camerupt. We deal some damage with Bite, but he starts using Amnesia, and given that Dark type is special, I switch to attacking with Strength. I'm feeling confident that we can tank a hit and secure the kill, but he lands a critical hit Earthquake, which takes down our starter. <laughs> Your dog is no more! How do you like that, Yugi? Silverfang had helped us through some of the hardest parts of our journey, and I wasn't about to let her death be in vain. This is the end for you! Mahad! Dark magic attack! Lakaza! What? No! After banishing Maxi to the Shadow Realm, we can pay our respects to Silverfang. Rest easy, old friend. 
We return to Mount Pyre in an attempt to fill the recent void in our team. Welcome aboard, Marshmelon. We might have been able to stop Team Magma, but Team Aqua is enacting their own evil plan. Gaia and Mana are able to clear out Team Aqua's hideout, but their leader escapes in a stolen submarine, and we can't give chase without the Dive HM. The only thing we can do now is sail to Moss Deep, the location of the next gym, and wait for the enemy to make the next move. To pass the time, I catch a star you we name Gadget, and we find this rocket parked right next to all these civilians' houses. That can't be safe, right? Well, the next gym also uses Spellcaster Pokémon, but between Gandora, Mana, and Gaia, we're able to win the duel without any problems. After the match, it turns out that even with Maxi banished to the Shadow Realm, Team Magma is up to their old tricks attacking the Space Center. So I know things are a little haywire right now, but the rocket launched safely! That's successful launch number one! Wait, Wait you, you launched, launched it? it? Oh no, why would they do this? Uh, perhaps we should get going before the authorities arrive? Yeah, that's probably wise. After making our escape, we get a tip from Steven concerning the whereabouts of Team Aqua. Luckily, he had the foresight to move to Lily Cove before they launched the rocket. After scouring the ocean floor, we managed to find Team Aqua in an underground cavern trying to awaken the legendary Kyogre. For the realization of my dream, you must disappear now! Get ready, Yugi! He's challenging us to another shadow game! Archie leads with Mightyena, and we send out Gaia. After slamming him with a few Giga Drains, he switches out to Crobat. I don't understand why Archie and Maxi couldn't get along, since they use almost the exact same Pokémon. Anyway, I switch to Mana, who ends up taking a lot more damage than I thought, but we're still able to eliminate the Crobat with Psychic. Thunderbolt is able to fry his Sharpedo, and Mightyena is still low, so another Thunderbolt finishes the duel. What? What's happening? Ah! It seems that both Groudon and Kyogre have left Hoenn in search of somewhere else to rest. And both Maxi and Archie are nowhere to be found. Uh, yeah, they probably won't be back. Uh, okay? By the way, I think I figured out how we can send you home. But it will take some time to find the materials. Really? Thank you so much! I mean, anything for the man who saved Hoenn. Yugi? Since we've come so far, why not finish this journey? I'm sure that's what our new friends would want. That's a great idea, Pharaoh! It was decided. Before heading home, we were going to challenge the last gym leader and the Pokémon League. Juan starts with the legendary... Love Disc. Well, this should be easy. Let's set up with Calm Minds and start the sweep. Confusion, that's not good. As long as we can break out of confusion, we should be able to... One, two, three... Self-hits. Three self-hits in a row. Wow. Well, the Citrus Berry brings us to a good amount of health again. Just one more Calm Mind should let us sweep his hole confused again. Okay, we're getting pretty low, so I'm thinking about pivoting from this Calm Mind plan. Sweet! Broke out of confusion again, let's set up Light Screen, and... You are kidding me. This has to be the strongest love disc in the history of the game. After a few more turns of confusion, we finally break through to take it down with Thunderbolt. Okay, well that plan is out the window. Let's switch over to Gaia for plan B. Giga Drain takes out Crawdont, and Celio deals some damage with Aurora Beam. But we can recover with Giga Drain and take it down. He brings out Kingdra and starts spamming Double Team. Luckily, Faint Attack can't miss, so we can still nail Kingdra for solid damage. Then he uses Rest to recover all of his health. We go back and forth, with Faint Attack bringing him low, only for Kingdra to rest back to full. After Wan uses a Hyper Potion, I decide to switch over to Sableye for a potential Confuse Ray. Doesn't work though. Kingdra has really high evasiveness at this point, so I decide to play it safe and sacrifice Marshmallow for the safe switch in. Gaia comes back out to play the same Faint Attack Rest game until we eventually manage to take it down. His final Pokémon is Whizcash, which stands no chance against Gaia's Giga Train. Wow, that was a long one. After some quick preparation, we head over to Victory Road. Now, I was expecting Wally to show up at the end of Victory Road, like what happens in most games, but nope, he is right toward the beginning. I bet you're surprised to see me here. Uh, yeah, you could say that. While I wasn't as prepared as I would have liked, Mana is able to set up a Calm Mind, and I've definitely learned my lesson about going for too many, so we take down Altaria after just one boost with a massive Psychic. Delcaddy falls as well, and we can swap to Valkyrian as a perfect counter to Wally's Magneton. Luckily, our confusion luck is better than it was against Juan, and Valkyrian lands a huge earthquake to eradicate the magnets. 
He sends in Roselia, so I switch back to mana on a Toxic, and Psychic destroys Roselia. Wally finally sends out his ace, Gardevoir. So I switch into Gandora on a Future Sight. Sharpedo is Dark type, so I'm not worried about Psychic attacks, and we can crunch his Magician Girl for big damage. Wally heals, but we keep battering away with Crunch, and what? Gandora takes the Future Sight, even though she's a Dark type. I did not know that is how that works. Luckily, no crit, so let's finish this up. Gandora, crunch. The rest of Victory Road isn't much trouble, but I was definitely going too fast and wasn't paying attention during this double battle when one of the trainers sent out a lantern. It slams Gandora with Thunderbolt before I even realized what was going on, and Gandora goes down. That one hurt since it was definitely avoidable. Well, welcome to the team, Gadget. Before we take on the Elite Four, we gather items, fill out the rest of our EVs, and level up our team to the cap of Drake's level 55 Salamence. Are you ready, Yugi? I'm nervous, Pharaoh. I understand. I am a little nervous as well. But we would never have gotten this far without the power of our new friends. I guess there's nothing left to do, but go for it! First up is Sydney, a dark type trainer. He starts Mightyena and we lead with Impy. Fake out his free damage and Mightyena goes for Pocket Sand, but Impy's Keen Eye prevents any decreases in accuracy, which marks the one and only time Keen Eye has ever been useful. We land a Confuse Ray and switch to Gaia. I taught her Brick Break specifically for this fight, so Gaia is able to eliminate his Dark Hyena in one chop. Next up is Absol, so I switch to our bulkiest member, Valkyrian. Absol tries to set up with Swords Dance one too many times, so we're able to take it down with Earthquake. Man, who would be dumb enough to try to stat boost that much? Couldn't be me. Next is Shiftry, so I switch to Impy, who manages to confuse it and whittle it down with Faint Attacks. Impy lands another Confuse Ray and switches back to Gaia for our classic fakeout strategy before taking it down with Brick Break. His last Pokemon is Crawdont, who falls to a single Giga Drain. That's one down. Second is Phoebe, the Ghost Trainer. And, well, you'd think we would go with one of our Dark Fiends, but I actually choose to lead with Mana and go for the Sweep. The AI really likes to go for Protect if they have the option, so we can get a free Calm Mind before eliminating Dusclops with a huge Psychic. Next is one of her two Bayonets, so I try to put it to sleep with Hypnosis, but it has Insomnia so it can't be put to sleep. Oh no, that could be a big mistake. We both get burned thanks to Synchronize, and I set up one more time before taking it down. Or I go for another Calm Mind. I really did not learn my lesson at all, did I? The first Bayonet finally gets taken down, as does the second. While mana is pretty low, a plus three Psychic should absolutely KO Dusclops, so we take it down with mana's HP in the red. Her last Pokemon is a Sableye, so we swap out and let Gaia knock it out with a couple of faint attacks. Okay, note to self, don't get carried away going for big numbers. Next is Glacia, the Ice Trainer. We start with Mana again, and she sends out one of her Celio. I'm pretty sure Celio does not have Insomnia, so we go for Hypnosis, manage to land it, and set up exactly two Calm Minds while it's asleep. It wakes up and goes for Hail, but we can eliminate it with Thunderbolt. Mana goes on an absolute rampage and eliminates Glacia's entire team with Thunderbolt and Psychic. That's better. The fourth trainer is Drake, the Dragon Master. He starts with Shelgon, and I lead with Valkyrian this time. And you remember how I said AI loves to go for Protect if it has the option? Well, Valkyrian sets up six Cosmic Powers, maxing out its defenses while taking almost no damage in return. Why would I go for this tank strategy, you ask? I didn't. Shush! Well, I taught Valkyrian Ice Beam just for this battle. We managed to take down Kingdra at an absolute slugfest with Drake using some of his full restores. And Flygon goes down to an Ice Beam. Salamence comes in, but Valkyrian is not intimidated. Well, he is intimidated, technically, but he shrugs off a super effective crunch like it was nothing and fires off an Ice Beam that doesn't quite manage to kill, but manages to get the freeze. So we take it down with another Ice Beam, and his last Pokemon goes down the same way. Valkyrian, you are a beast. This seems really dangerous. Shouldn't there be some kind of guardrails here? Now that we've beaten the Elite Four, there's only one trainer left the former 8th gym leader and champion of the Hoenn region, Wallace. Not exactly a name that strikes fear into your enemies, but whatever. We could totally go for our combine strategy again, and it would almost certainly win us the game, but I want to give some of our other Pokemon a chance in the spotlight. So out comes our newest member, Gadget, who lands a couple huge thunderbolts to take out Wallace's Wailord. 
Ludicolo is up, and strangely enough, Gaia is the perfect matchup for it, since we can use Faint Attack to guarantee hits while ignoring his double teams. But Melodic, one of Wallace's biggest threats, comes out next. Gaia hits a Giga Drain, which does just less than half, but Melodic lands a critical hit Ice Beam to destroy Gaia from almost full health. You might have saved Hoenn, but I won't go easy on you. Gaia was one of our most important Pokemon on this run, since she let us beat Watson and played a crucial role earlier in the Elite Four. So seeing her go down is pretty rough. I think it's time we end this charade. Mana goes on one of her famous rampages and eliminates the rest of Wallace's team with a combo of Psychic and Thunderbolt. I can't believe it. You've won. You're the new champion of Hoenn. We did it. We beat the Elite Four and became the king of Pokemon battles. But it's not over yet. We still need to find a way home. What's that? Oh, it's a message from Steven. Hey, Yugi. You really are king of Pokemon dueling. I'm still working on the device to send you home. In the meantime, I have a gift for you waiting at my house in Lily Cove. I'll send you another message when the device is complete. Steven Stone. I guess we should go check out this gift, huh? I wonder what this is. A Beldum. Such a strong Pokemon. We name it Exodia, and while training it, we decided to revisit all the wonderful people and places we'd seen here in the Hoenn region. Now we only had to wait for Steven's device to be finished. Are you alright? I'm really looking forward to finally getting back home. As am I. I certainly won't miss all the water, though. It's like 80% water. Like too much water. Ugh, right? That's Steven. It seems like the device is ready. Hi, Steve. Get out of the way, Galbat. You're ruining the moment. Hey, Yugi. You said the device is finished? Yes, you can finally return home to your dimension. That's great. But before you go, how about you take me on? What? One final battle before you head home? <laughs> You're on. Here it is. The final battle. He leads with Skarmory, and Gadget comes out swinging with a massive Thunderbolt, which one-shots his Metal Bird. Next up is Agron, which Gadget dismantles with a super effective Surf. Come on, Steven. I know you have more than that. Cradilly comes in and tanks an Ice Beam, only to be taken down by another. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't take you lightly. Steven sends in his strongest Pokémon, Metagross. Surf brings it to half before it's berry, and Starmie manages to bring it to a sliver before finally going down to a psychic. Steven full restores, and I send in Valkyrian, who devastates Metagross with two earthquakes. His next Pokémon is Armaldo, so I switch to Exodia, who shrugs off a slash and responds with a monstrous Meteor Mash for the one-hit kill. His last Pokémon is Claydol, so I send out Valkyrian for the Mirror Match. The two of them slug it out, with Valkyrian even managing to get another Ice Beam Freeze before finally taking it down with Shadow Ball to win the match. <laughs> wow, you're really something else. Is there anything I can do for you before you go? Could you please take care of my Pokémon? I wouldn't want to lose any more of them. That's the least I can do for the man who defeated Team Aqua and Team Magma. Thanks so much. Are you alright? Yes. I'll just miss the new friends we made while we were here. I will miss them as well, but they will be with us as long as we continue to remember them. Yeah, you're right. Goodbye, everyone. Wait, lose them? Did he not understand how Pokemon centers work? Ow, my head! Ugh, what just- Hey, Yug! Where you been? We have been looking all over for you. Joey? Is that you? Course it's me, pal! Why'd you disappear on us like that? It's a long story, Joey. But I was sent to another world. And I had parents! Thanks so much for making it this far. We are still a really small channel, and making videos like this one takes a ton of time and effort. So if you want to see more videos like this, please tell the algorithm by liking the video and leaving a comment. Maybe let me know what game or theme I should try out next time. Anyway, that is going to do it. Check out the description for all the music and other resources I used. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next one. You just had to try to expand the oceans, didn't you? It wasn't a bad idea. Of course it was a bad idea. You wanted to drown everyone. Like your idea was much better. I was trying to make more places for humanity to live. That makes perfect sense.
Besides, Hoenn is like 80% water. Why would you need more? Yeah, yeah, and keep another talking. Thing. Can you imagine all the real estate opportunities? Housing prices are ridiculous. I was doing charity work.